France has clearly chosen a different course. Thirty-nine-year-old Emmanuel Macron elected president with two-thirds of ballot cast over the far right's Marine Le Pen. After Brexit, after Donald Trump's election, make way instead for a leader who prefers, well, as the uh, Financial Times put it, globalism to nationalism. In the crowd, there were even cries of "Vive l'Europe, long live Europe." Is it a turning point, not just for France? Well, not so fast. Macron doesn't move into the Elysee Palace until next Sunday. But already, Paris has witnessed its first demonstration against the president-elect, courtesy of the Communist Alliance CGC trade union and uh, the far-left movement of Jean-Luc Mélenchon. How much change do the French really want? What kind of change? And uh, if uh, his policies fail, could it still be uh, the far right's turn in five years? Big decisions now rest on the shoulders of the youngest uh, president, uh, the youngest head of state in France, in fact, since Napoleon Bonaparte, starting with his choice of prime minister and preparations for next month's legislative election. Uh, this president is also the first since General de Gaulle, who's never held elected office before becoming uh, president. The trouble will start with the naming of his prime minister and how it weighs on his bid to build a new party from scratch that can win a majority in legislative elections that are just five weeks away today in the France 24 debate. We're asking if it's change you can believe in in this country. With us, now he campaigned for Barack Obama in 2012 and Emmanuel Macron in 2017. Lex Paulson teaches at the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po. Thank you for being with us. Great to be here. Uh, also with us, uh, Emery Choprad, uh, independent member of the European Parliament, formerly <coughs> with the National Front. Did you vote on Sunday? Who'd you vote for? No, I voted for Macron. You voted for Macron. Yes, All right. It was, it I want you to you'll explain that to us in a yes, bit. Yes. Okay. Have to. Also with us, uh, Georgia uh, Kuzmanovic, spokesperson for the far left, uh, Jean Luc Mélenchon, who's vying to uh, build a conservative, a uh, rather conservative, a uh, far left block. Good uh, evening. Uh, left in is enough. Uh, left <laughs> block and yeah. in parliament, and you yourself running in legislative elections. Yes. Next month in the north. In the north. In the north. Uh, public relations strategist. Olivia Grégoire is with us. Uh, so much change. Kind of nice to get an eye on, 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 on how the French see it and how much change, again, they, that they want. I'll try to. All right. The France 24 debate on Facebook <clears throat> and Twitter. The hashtag F24 debate. Now, he told the crowds gathered outside the Louvre that he wanted to bridge the divisions plaguing France. He also reminded them, well, that the whole world was watching. Europe and the world are waiting for us to defend the spirit of the Enlightenment, under threat in so many places. They're waiting for us to defend liberty, to protect the oppressed. They're waiting for us to bring a new hope, a new humanism to a safer world, a world whose liberty is being defended a world of growth with more justice and environmental sustainability. They are waiting for us to finally be ourselves. Uh, Lex Paulson, I suppose uh, your American friends seeing this election through the prism of people who've lived through the one in the United States. Yeah, we've in the last eight years seen two historic elections in uh, in my home country in 2008 and 2016. The great difference, of course, is that uh, there's a partisan realignment happening in France that wasn't the case in the U.S. In fact, after Barack Obama's election, the Republicans decided very quickly that whatever the president proposed, uh, they were going to oppose, and it made legislating extremely difficult. Here in France, you have 74% um, of the French voters uh, who cast a vote for one of the two major parties uh, in 2012, now it was 24% in the first round, meaning that there's an enormous desire for new answers from the party system in France that Barack Obama did not have the opportunity uh, in his presidency. So I think uh, it's equally historic, maybe even more of an opportunity for Macron. That, that means I get to ask you your, the question I wanted earlier. Why did you vote for Emmanuel Macron, somebody who used to be at the National Front? Because I experienced 
the reality of Front National. So when I was elected, I thought this party could change the, the situation in France, to reform France, to propose serious reform. It's absolutely not the case. This party and this leader are not able to transform the country. They deny globalization instead of trying to adapt France to globalization. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. And the good news with Macron, even if I do not support Macron, I mean, I voted for him. There are some good things, in my opinion. But on the other end, I uh, regret a kind of angelism regarding identity crisis in France. I think he do not understand what's going on really about the problem of Islamization, radical Islam in France. But economically speaking, I support his view because I think he really wants to adapt France to globalization. How do, how do you feel when you hear people saying vive l'Europe and when you hear the Beethoven's hymn to joy, no, which is the ode of the European Union? I want reform for Europe. I do not want to destroy Europe as a project. I believe we need a strong Europe in a multipolar world. So that's not my project to destroy Europe. And that was not my project entering with the National Front. And there is, even in that party, you have a debate regarding Europe. Some people criticizing the, the, the situation about Euro, about what Le Pen decided to, to, to propose to, to exit from Euro. All right, so the splintering is taking place mm -hmm. uh, not just within the main center-right and center-left blocks uh, that Lex was talking about. And, 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 and where right now there, there, there's a split over how to approach these legislative elections. It could benefit the uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon's movement. Uh, the, the initial polls, and of course <clears throat> it's early days, suggesting that uh, you could be the opposition on the left soon. Uh, y your thoughts about Macron's win, is it positive for France? First, what is positive for France is that uh, Madame Le Pen uh, lost the election because we cannot have a far-right uh, did, you, did you vote for Macron? No, no, abstain. As you abstained? Yeah, abstained. Because we were sure that she will have the, he will have the 65 percent, as was, uh, uh, it was sure that he will be elected. And everything is a, is a bit uh, built up. I remind you what happened on the first round of these elections. On the first round of this election, you have, you, you have four parties that appeared. They are pretty much the same strength. It's the, all about 20 percent and 7 million voters. And of course, just now you have 66% of people who voted for uh, uh, Mr. Macron, but you have 26% uh, uh, of people who abstained, 9% of people who voted blank or void, which is a huge record since the 60s, mm. uh, is the president that's the worst elected in this country. But when you abstain, and, that and, means and you're And the most important thing, yeah. most important thing is that mo most of the voters do not support his project. So now the real fight will be for the legislative elections. And it is really not sure that uh, this president will have a majority to run, uh, and I hope he will not have it. Olivier Grégoire? I'm in part, uh, I do not agree uh, with exactly what you say. You're right on the point that 60% uh, of the, the, the French people did not see yesterday the candidate for whom they first vote on the first turn. But if you look at the last election um, and you, you look at the voices, uh, Emmanuel Macron is far better elected than Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande. So there is kind of paradox over there. Yeah, because if you look at the voices, this is the reality. And but what's interesting... Right it's what? It, it had a far-right candidate, which yeah. was not the case of uh, Mr. Sarkozy. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that should be the answer. But the other part, took my you took the other part of, of the paradox, sorry, is we are the one who fought for national. I'm not coming sentence. from national. Yes, yes, but that's uh, Olivier. exactly why. Yeah. Sorry, Olivier Gregoire. Sorry, uh, you're going to fight just after. There's no problem. <laughs> no but problem. I just want to finish. There's it's something which would be interesting to discuss together. Is that he's very well elected. Okay, you get the national front. Okay, you're right. But what's interesting is that even if he get a lot of voices, you're right. He only gather. 43% of the population of the uh, voting people. That is to say that it's the president who has the less support because he had 35% of people who didn't vote yesterday. So we had 43 in support and 35 who didn't say nothing. So it's, I think it's far more complicated than the, 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 the figures uh, appears. And plus the 43 that supported him 
are not supporting this project. That's very That's different. That's not true. You have 33 you have, you percent. So if you look at the, the last polls uh, coming from uh, the night, because it's sociological mm. polls and you should have mm. written it, you get on the 48 uh, percent of people voting for Macron decided after the first turn. Mm. You're right. So it was a struggle against the National Front. But you get approximately 33 percent. It's the opinion where and Arisa interactive uh, polls. So these three percent were support to the program. So Olivier, let, let's look at let's look at the numbers. Macron's win uh, a landslide uh, in in terms of votes. The man who didn't a year ago didn't even have a party, winning er, almost every single département in France, uh, even winning Corsica and the Riviera, albeit by a nose. And uh, here's where Marine Le Pen has a problem going forward. She garnered 7.6 million votes in the first round, finishing a close uh, second, and she only won over 3 million more voters in the runoff. Now, uh, those 3 million more voters can seem like too many to some. It's a revolution. Uh, it, it, it's is, a revolution. Is the glass half full or half empty when you look at that? We get some good prophecies, so I will listen to you. But the fact mm -hmm. is that we have never seen the National Front uh, gathering new voices between the first turn and the, the first round and the second round. I, so this is historical, and we can say we don't see it. This is approximately but, 4 million voices more. But we have to explain why. We have to explain the problem of Front National it's based on the reality. The reality is a double crisis. You have a crisis of identity. People are afraid about radical Islam expanding in the French territory and in Europe. And you have a crisis of disindustrialization. That's the problem. That is the reality. If we do not take it in account, then Front National will expand. I but I, I, I said system. I took my responsibility. That's very important. You can imagine I come from Front National and I had to vote for uh, Emmanuel Macron. Why did I do that? Because I know the reality of this party now. Uh, the problem of anti-Semitism, the problem of uh, totally uh, inability to govern. They are not able to govern. So I took my responsibility. It was difficult for me. I did not choose to, to, to put a blank vote. But uh, I have to say that uh, Emmanuel Macron is really impressing regarding some good news, uh, globalization. He says we have to adapt France to globalization. It's a complete renewal of speech in the political landscape. But at the same time, if we do not take in account the loser, what we can call the loser of globalization in France, and there are numerous people that are suffering from uh, the absence of solution, then Front National will win the next run. All right, let, let's pause. And the Marine Le Pen underwhelming in terms of what the opinion polls had predicted mm. in the very final days of the campaign, but she did gain more votes. What our reporters also found was that many people who in the past would have voted for Le Pen as a protest vote, mm. uh, they actually wanted to see the National Front as a party of government this time around. Did you get the sense of that when you were out canvassing? I, I did. I, I think that, um, I, as, as my colleague pointed out, I, I think that there's an enormous frustration about the quote-unquote losers of globalization. There's a sense that globalization um, is a fact of life, and yet that it's produced um, hu whole communities within France that have been left behind. And similarly in America, we saw uh, Donald Trump exploit uh, those fears and uncertainties to, to enormous electoral impact. But Marine Le Pen had to do more than just speak to uh, the fear fears and maybe even the prejudices of a part of the French electorate, she had to offer ideas of how she would govern the country. Anyone who watched that debate uh, for two hours That's on Wednesday right. night saw, saw a, a prosecutor, but not a president. I mean, she had incredibly sharp lines of attack in linking uh, Emmanuel Macron to Hollande or to Germany or to uh, Islamic terrorism. But um, uh, number one, her, her arguments did not uh, bear up under the weight of, of, of scrutiny. And number two, she had no positive program. And I think anyone who was making the decision in the last few days, uh, most of them were going to choose uh, a, someone who could be a president, and that was Macron. All right, we talked about at the outset about international reactions. Uh, uh, here's an important one that came out this Monday. Uh, well, it was one from Angela Merkel, which sounds a bit like an endorsement. 
Uh, and th but the other reaction that we need to follow here is the one from Britain. Um, it's sort of an argument for stealing the UK for Brexit negotiations. The Prime Minister, Theresa May, well, she's also on the campaign trail. She's got a June 8th snap general election coming up. Now, yesterday, uh, a new French president was elected. He was elected with a strong mandate, which he can take into as a strong position in the negotiations. The UK, we need to ensure we've got an equally strong mandate and an equally strong negotiating position. All right. On, on, uh, f what, what's your reaction, Olivier Grégoire, when you see uh, Theresa May saying, well, Macron's wins an argument for voting for me? She's very clever. She's, uh, she has proven this um, during the, the, the election. Um, I think on a communication point of view, what is interesting is the huge difference between the reaction of Angela Merkel and the reaction of Theresa May. So, and I think that the coming months uh, and weeks, because we know that Emmanuel Macron is going to turn around mm -hmm. Europe in the coming uh, uh, weeks, I think it's going to be difficult for him. And I think that <coughs> even if he's elected now in France, he will have to cope and to face uh, the, the distrust of Europe and Theresa May also. Nothing is written about Europe in the coming weeks. It won't be as easy as it looks. It won't be as easy as it looks, George Kuzmanovic. For whom? For Macron when <laughs> no, he goes it, and it tours won't. around Europe. <laughs> it won't. It won't. It won't be easy. Uh, I would say something you said, Mr. Choprad. We are, the France Insoumise and Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the one who blocked Marine Le Pen. During one year, she was built up like, like she will be at 30%. And if you look at the election, we blocked her in every popular area of France. We did the work. So we don't have any lesson to receive. Uh, we don't want what was built up, which is the second round of this election. Everything was done not to have Jean-Luc Mélenchon against Macron. This would have been a far more different debate and a very difficult election for Mr. Macron because we are ready, Mr. Mélenchon is ready, and he knows he knows, for example, what means to go out of, uh, of uh, if necessary, of, of Europe, of uh, Euro. Let, let's but she doesn't know. So it will be difficult once again because it will not have a majority. I mean, there is here, there is a, a class struggle uh, in this country. Won't have a majority, Lex Paulson? I, I think we're going to have a very, very strong field of candidates. Just this week, uh, you'll, you'll be seeing more and more of the candidates chosen from Almash. We've already <clears> announced 14 of them coming from all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of professions. We had 15,000 people uh, postulate and, and uh, propose so their candidates. who's the most formidable opponent? Will it be the far left? Will it be the socialists? Will it be the conservatives? Will it be the far right? I mean, this is a, this is a predominantly localized election process. So yeah. we're going to be fighting these elections district by district, circonscription by circonscription, and we're taking absolutely nothing for granted. I think the Mélenchon campaign proved that they were very strong on the ground. I'll tell you, I went to places like Nancy and Orléans and Chartres, and the only other campaign that I saw on the ground was of, of the France Insoumise. So I have a lot of respect, and I, I think that there's going to be uh, points of convergence, of convergence <laughs> in our ideas, but frankly, I think that uh, our campaign has future-oriented solutions, and uh, at least when it comes to the economy and Europe, um, we have the more progressive uh, ideas, and I, I, uh, I look forward to that debate on the ground, and I expect that these are going to be some very close elections. All right, we're but, going to uh, pick up on these points when we come back. We'll take a quick break. Stay with us. You're watching a special edition of the France 24 debate.